What would be the simplest approach for starting to solo over autumn leaves be? Would it be scales, arpeggios, triads? Well, in today's video, I want to share with you a really simple way to start playing over the tune, hearing simple things which leads to more fulfilling playing in the long run. So the tempting thing to do here is to go, right, you need these modes, you need these arpeggios. There you go, start to work with those. And it's very easy on the guitar to rattle through scales, modes, arpeggios, and really not understand what we we're doing or really even hearing what we're doing. Or the troubling thing is later on, we all we can do is play those things and we can't play any music with it. Regular viewers of my channel will know about my idea of the high five, where you just use five notes of a scale. And today we're gonna to play with one, two, three. We're gonna go through autumn leaves as follows. Firstly, we're gonna to learn to play the root, then we're gonna do dyads, and then we're gonna do what's called like a, a tritonic scale, which is just a three note scale, with the idea of being to learn to musically say things with those very restricted few notes. To illustrate all of this, we're just gonna work with the A section of this tune. Now, learning to work with the standard, I wouldn't work out how to play over the whole thing first. I'd just work on it in sections and, and build up to playing over the whole form. But we're just gonna work over A minus seven, D seven, G major seven, C major seven, F sharp minor seven flat five, B seven, E minor. All the resources from today, any tab notation you see on the screen is available as a PDF. Check the description beneath. If you'd like help practicing jazz guitar with purpose, then click subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join me every Wednesday and Saturday for jazz guitar lessons. Now, on to today's lesson. So, let's find the root of each chord. So A, D, G, C, F sharp, Then what I do is hum or sing it. See if you can do that without, you know, over the chords. And you'll feel more connected with the music if you can do that. And obviously there's so many different ways you could play just the root note. So let's, let's try another way. I'm gonna drop for this next one. Go back up. Ascend, descend, ascend, let's ascend again, descend to E. So wherever you go for that route, you've got a choice whether to go, you know, higher or lower on the guitar. Again, it's it's really basic, but you need to be able to hear that. Then we could make it a bit more interesting by let's move it again but do a different rhythm. We're gonna do this rhythm, one, two, and. So one, two, and like that. Two, three, four. One, two, and 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 three, four. So you could play about with what beat you put the root on, where you play it on the neck, but always try and hear it. Play the chord and hear the root in your head and then play it. Now, move on to my next one. We're gonna play with the root and third this time. So obviously there's some theory behind all of this. Some of these are major. If it's a minor chord, it's gonna have a minor third. If it's a major chord or a dominant chord, it's gonna have a major third. You could also be more inventive with how you play it. You could play it in the other way, you know. If I mix some of the directions and add some other rhythms in, it could be more interesting. And there, and it's, it's definitely not terribly exciting, but it's starting to hear something a little bit beyond. This next time what we're gonna do, instead of going, so going up to the third, we're gonna put it beneath. So it's a slightly different sound. Again, this is all about laying a good foundation and, and making sure that you hear it, you know, being able to so, so far, I want you to hear duh, just that against that, and then do da, 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 and then also da, 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 da. So, it's just about hearing those different possibilities over the chords. So, we've got the, we've got the third above and beneath. We can also get it on the same string. So, let's try that. So 
just from that one A, we've got or well, imagine how many A's there are on the guitar, the different ways of just finding that. But it's great if you can be in that position where someone plays an A minor seven chord and you can hear those different things and you can gradually add to what you hear. And that's the key thing. As tempting as it is to sort of shred through stuff and, you know, blast through arpeggios and scales, this kind of thing, although it's simpler and, you know, m might not sound as interesting to start with, I think is the key to learning to become a better improviser because you work on hearing everything that you're about to play. And it means you don't play the same stuff again and again. And if I find if you just practice stuff like that, it's, it's quite a hard thing to access in the moment. You know, you feel like you want to start there. Whereas if we're working on here is, you know, you play that chord and you're gradually working on expanding on what you can hear. And we're just limiting ourselves to three notes today. So just think if you gradually add more notes to that, you'll be able to create more inventive and more musical lines as you progress with this way of working. So final way today is one, two, three. So we've obviously got the root on each chord. So like the root of A is A. Then we've got the third, which is either major or minor, depending on the chord. And then we're gonna have the second, sometimes referred to as the ninth. And on some chords, it will be a major second, which is a tone higher, so like A to B. And on a couple chords, it's gonna be a semitone higher, what's known as a flat two or flat nine. So take an A minor chord, instead of going A or A and C, which was the root in third, we're gonna go A, B, C. Let's do that against each chord. Or play it on one string like this. And the task is really to internalize the sound of it like you know, da 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 And just sort of work on trying to hear different things with it. Like if you can hear one, two, three, you can hear three, two, one, or two, three, one. Or two, three, one. You know, different permutations of just three notes would create different melodies. Think about where you place them. You know, I did it for a one, two, three when I played it, which is more just for the sake of ease of illustrating it. But you know, I wouldn't play it that way. It might be like one, two, three, four. You know, so I came in on the end. One, two, three, four, one. Like that. That's just with the root second and third. Just I, working with these restrictions might feel challenging at first, it might feel too simple, but ask yourself the question, are you actually hearing everything? And check whether you're hearing it correctly. So, you know, hear it in your head, then play it and see if it's, if it's matching up what you hear in the head. And if it's not, then you need to play the stuff and then kind of imagine it in your head again and then keep doing that. I'm sure many of my viewers will have played many more advanced things over those changes, but I question whether they knew what they were playing, understood what they were playing, or could create something for themselves like they were playing. Because that's what this route's about. It's about you developing your own voice. And for some of you, it might be that finding roots and thirds isn't as automatic or as easy as you would like. And if it's not, that should be a priority. If you can't create a basic melody with the first, the second, and the third, why would you expect to be able to do it with Dorian? So for me with this approach, it's much more musical. You'll learn to say something more creative with just one or two or three notes than you will with two octave arpeggios and you know five positions of the every mode that we could do for that just section of the song. If you'd like some more videos for myself to help with some of the topics covered today, then check out my video on knowing your chords, learning your notes and your chords, and also my chord lesson on autumn leaves itself. Enjoy the practice, and if you've got any questions or comments, then do leave them below. Until next time, you take care.